Something new is starting in your life today. He said, Behold, think not of the former, I will do a new thing. I believe God that the new thing that is beginning in your life today will bring you to great places. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. amen. I say it will bring you to great places. Amen. It will connect you to people that matter in your life. Amen. It will bring you rest round about. Amen. If you are saying amen, make it better. Amen. This new beginning will mark the end of shame for you. Amen. It will mark the end of reproach for you. Amen. It will mark the end of tears for you. I'd like you to lift up your voice now. Lord, this new month, show your wonders in my life. Let there be amazing visitation, amazing testimonies, amazing turnaround. This new month, show your mighty power over every issue of my life. Grant unspeakable testimonies to answer for me this month. Let God hear your voice. Unspeakable testimonies, unspeakable breakthroughs, unspeakable favor, uncommon opportunity. Let it answer for me this month. Lord, let this month answer with uncommon wonders in my life, uncommon favor, uncommon breakthrough, uncommon help. Uncommon speed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. This month you will not record trials, you will record testimonies. If you are saying amen, say better amen. The programming of the wicked concerning you will fail. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any agent of the devil on assignment against you, I decree, let them eat vengeance this month. Let them swallow vengeance this month. Let them collide with vengeance this month. That amen is too weak. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Anyone that has prepared a band of wickedness against you, I command their arrow to backfire. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. For you and your family be exempted from shame. Amen. Be exempted from reproach. Amen. Be exempted from calamity. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. From the north, from the south, from the east and the west. Whoever is connected to your blessing, let them not rest until your portion is delivered. Amen. Let them not rest until your portion is surrendered. Anywhere they are taking decision of people to be favored, your name will be included in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your work. It shall be well with your family. Make that amen stronger. No more tears. Only laughter. No more tears. Only laughter. Amen. We answer for you this month. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord. And please take your seat. A teaching series is on unveiling the breakthrough power of kingdom stewardship. Unveiling the breakthrough power of kingdom stewardship.
The end time church of Jesus is ordained a breakthrough church. What is a breakthrough church? A people without limits. A people ordained for consistent progress. A people ordained for signs and for wonders. You were born for signs, so you were ordained to see signs. See, I and the children God has given to me, they are for signs and they are for wonders. A breakthrough church is a solution center. And many shall say, come, let us go to the house of the God of Jacob. For he shall teach us of his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So everyone appearing in the church must have an answer to their crisis, to their challenges. Jesus is coming back for a reigning church, a church that is reigning in power, reigning in wisdom, reigning in authority. Jesus is coming for the church of giants. Not where they are just being holified and preparing for when they will go to heaven. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Who will go to heaven? No? Are you afraid of heaven? But you must finish your work here before you go. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And again, you will not go to heaven like Lazarus. Who wants to go to heaven like Lazarus? You will live in my boy's quarter. <laughs> Jesus is coming back for a church of giants. Supernatural breakthrough will be the core identity of the end time church before Jesus returns. A church that is unstoppable by forces of wickedness. A church that cannot bow to satanic manipulation. In fact, the church is a dread. Forces dread the church. And that is the church you belong to. And what happens for the church is what is ordained to happen in your life. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Because by predestination, you are an unstoppable entity. The part of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. The church is an unstoppable entity. God did not give you a destiny that will be limited by men or frustrated by forces of wickedness. That is why I said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. To make this a reality, we are going to look at one of the key Factors that will guarantee the rising of every giant, which is the power of dedication. The power of dedication. Dedication is the secret of power in the kingdom.
your chance of emerging as a giant in life, in destiny, in your career, in your future, is at the mercy of your dedication. Your dedication. And your dedication is your choice. It's not a must. You can't force someone to be dedicated in what he has not understood on what he does not believe. Hear this? You cannot be dedicated to God and end up weak spiritually. Anyone that have given himself to be dedicated to God must end up strong spiritually. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. To know something well, you must be dedicated before you can know it. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Serving God requires ultimate dedication before it can be profitable. What does it mean to be dedicated? To be dedicated simply means unreserved commitments. Let me use it this way. Deadly commitments. Commitments beyond reservation. Nothing to hold back. And dedication is one of the core producer of power. You can't be dedicated and end up powerless mentally, spiritually, physically. So your dedication is a major trigger for the release of power upon your life. As scripture says, in the days of his power, his people shall be willing. Does dedication produce power? We look at a few of them. Number one, dedication guarantees the release of power. Because dedicated people always abide in his presence. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. Psalm 27 and verse 4. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Look at verse 5 now. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret 
of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon the rock Moses was a core addict in abiding in the presence of God no wonder he manifested unusual power he had unusual access to the power of God because he was always there always in his presence and whatever is driving you away from the presence of God want to disconnect you from the power of God no wonder David said a day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness they go from strength to strength. Everyone appearing before God in Zion. Should I shock you? You are not dedicated to pastor. You are not dedicated to deacon or deaconess. You are dedicated to God. Your dedication is not adding to me. It's adding to you. So if you know that you are supposed to be dedicated... I'm not going today. Somebody has made me angry. Don't come. Stay back. Your place, another person will soon take. Serving God is a privilege. Being dedicated to God also is a privilege. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a football match. The moment you, something enters you and you begin to mess up. You know, in football, the people on the bench, they are praying that you should make mistake. Oh Lord, make somebody leg break today. Make somebody leg break so that I will shine. Make somebody leg break. Make somebody leg break. Because that's who they want to play. Through of us. And one mumu spirit will just catch you. And before you know what's happening, you start misbehaving. Coach will just say, ah, I'm getting tired of this person. I want to win. Okay, stand up, stand up. I say, Father, thank you, Lord. <laughs> It's my turn to shine. <laughs> it's my turn to shine. Hey, coach, don't call me. You. <laughs> you are not dedicated to any pastor. You are dedicated to God. You are not dedicated for dickiness. You are not dedicated to your unit leader. So that you now think now that they are begging me to come and sing. Now you only get voice. Lucifer misbehave, then throw and come out. If you misbehave, you then go throw, you come out. Should I shock you? There are people seated here now that can be here. So that you won't be thinking now that uh, nobody like me. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let your head be calm. Oh. Even you that is serving wherever you are now. There are people. Is there any special school they go to do sanctuary? Is there any special school they go to do ushering work? If you bring nursery, primary one and primary two, they can count cheers. So don't think that uh, you are doing any specialty. It's just a privilege. Are you hearing me now? It's just a privilege. No, I'm not coming. Stay. By the time your mumu don't reach, somebody will take your place. And you know, when you are doing some of these things, the Holy Ghost will just be quiet. You will just be quiet. You will just be quiet. He won't talk. Oh. He won't talk. He will just be allowing you. That thing that he's doing, you job be doing, you doing, you doing, you doing, you doing. You. <laughs> so our dedication is for our rising. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Our dedication is for what? Our rising. He 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. How does dedication produce power for rising? Through the power of sacrifice. Dedicated people, they are sacrificial people. Dedicated people, they are sacrificial people. They can deny themselves of time. They can deny themselves of pleasure. Why? They want to sacrifice their way to their top. There is a place prepared for you at the top, but it will cost you more. Every dedication goes with a cost. You can't be dedicated without a cost. It will cost you something. David said, I will not give to the Lord that which will cost me nothing. You can't be dedicated without being sacrificial. You think I don't love sleep? You think I don't love sleep? You think I don't love sleep? I love sleep too. My body requires sleep. But for the sake of the work, man, your sleep is limited. I have to pay extra price to do the inconvenience to make sure that things are working. Your body will be telling you, sleep small, sleep small. The spirit will be telling you, remember, people will come to church. People will come to church. <laughs> it goes with sacrifice. It's painful. But at the end, it is gainful. Every sacrifice is painful. But at the end, most rewarding. Your height of rising will determine the quality of your sacrifice. How high do you want to rise? Will determine how much price you will be willing to pay. All of us will not rise at the same frequency. Because not all of us will be willing to pay the same price. Your sacrifice determines your change of levels. Your sacrifice determines your open heaven. Your sacrifice determines your breakthrough frequency. So, you determine what you pay. Nobody dialogues with you. You dialogue with yourself. And Jesus said, if a corn of wheat... <clears throat> Fall to the ground. He said, You bring forth much fruit. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and abide. <laughs> and abide. So you must see your sacrifice as your major key. If you want to be dedicated, it is sacrificial. Prayer time is sacrificial. Because everybody has appointments. Everybody has something to do. Outreach time, Thursday, Saturday, it is sacrificial. Who doesn't have what to do? How many of you now think that you are busy? How many of you now think that you are busy? Some people claim to be busy, but nothing is coming out of their busyness. I'm busy, I'm busy. What have come out of your life? Busy with yeah, yeah, and nonsense. Nothing is being added. But if truly you are busy, people will be seeing amazing results. It's not using man to be saying I'm busy, and nothing is coming out. Fake. Your busy is fake. 
If truly you are abu people that are abusing, they are abusing on genuine cause. Productive engagement. So watch where your time is going because sacrifice requires time. Watch where your time is going. Watch where your time is going. Every great destiny will not require small sacrifice. It will require great sacrifice. So be willing to pay it instrumentally. I mean, we don't finish paying all the price immediately. We are paying them instrumentally. As we are about beginning a new beginning now, one of the things that you must decide is the new sacrifice for your new beginning. We'll come to that later. Number three, how does dedication produce power? Dedicated people are persistent in prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make it tremendous power available which is dynamic in its working. The effectual for it to be effectual, you must be persistent. You must be consistent. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray. Scripture says concerning the disciples, they always come at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer. Nothing shapes destiny like prayer. Nothing enhance progress like prayer. Nothing clears barrier like prayer. Nothing makes the hand of God to manifest on your matter like prayer. But prayer cannot produce genuine results without a heart dedication. Not a head dedication. Heart. A heartfelt prayer. Prayer goes with a dedication. And if there is any area the enemy has measured his attack on is on your prayer life. The attack on the enemy is heavily against the prayer life of many believers. Shabi, you prayed on Monday. Why are you going on Wednesday? Shabi, you went on Monday. Why are you going on Friday? This prayer thing is getting too much. Oh. Satan is the one now canceling you. And because the spirit of God has left you, you say, yes, so it's true. I went on, I was in church on Sunday now. I went on Monday, I better make a rest. I'm not pastor. It's pastor that needs plenty prayer. The blessing come into your life, do you bring it to the house of pastor? without season. Why? Because life has been designed for times and season. <laughs> so if your seasons of blessing must not stop, you must pray without what? Season. Where your prayer stops, that's where God stops. The act of God in our life, they are principally triggered by the prayer. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Prayer goes with a dedication. Dedication. You must be dedicated to it. Another thing that guarantees the release of power through dedication is consecration.
if your dedication must produce results, then you must be conscious about your consecration. Check your heart. Activity is not equal productivity. You can be very active in church, but you are not productive. You are not getting results the way you should get. Check your heart. Scripture says, consecrate yourself. Joshua chapter 3, I think verse 5. He said, for tomorrow, the Lord shall do amazing things in your midst. If your dedication must produce results, it must go with consecration. Our heart must be consecrated daily to God. You must always check your heart. You must always purge your heart. Scripture says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He will not only hear you, he will not bless you. If I regard iniquity in my heart. Don't be dedicated with grudges. Don't be dedicated with bitterness, with offenses. I have one rule. If you are giving me concern, I leave you alone so that I won't miss this race. I'm accountable to many lives. If I just notice that you, you, this person will give me I just change direction, neat. I just leave you alone. Lord, help this person know. So that I will not miss this work and miss the grace that goes with this work and miss the blessing. Pray for the person, forgive the person, let him go his way. Before you now go and carry one bag of cement on your heart, you are coming to church like this. <laughs> You can be singing and frowning, you know. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> you can be ushering and frowning. You can be collecting offering baskets. I will deal with you. <laughs> Check your heart. I, the Lord, search the hearts, and I examine the ray to reward every man according to his deed. Someone will come to the altar. To take one assignment. Someone will sit down there and do winch. It's because you don't know that you are in the house of God. That was how Papa went to Joss in, uh, was in 1986 or 1987. He was preaching. Under the heavy influence of the anointing, a woman did like this. And the angels just dropped one stone inside her stomach. She was believing God for the fruit of the womb. And thank God she went somewhere. The prophet just spotted her. Hey, woman! You insulted a prophet some years back. He said, me? You know, when you are misbehaving, you won't know. He said, me? When did I do that? He said, God, let God reveal to you who you insulted. Let him pray for you. I don't have power to pray for you. So the woman now entered emergency fasting. And you know, the Holy Ghost cannot miss show. He will show. He said, Lord, forgive me. Who have I wronged? And in a trance, the Holy Ghost just flashed the picture of what happened. She said, hey! She started looking for where Papa was. By then, Papa has already left uh, uh, Banawa. They are already in uh, Rajioba. That was how she trailed her way. So she explained to the pastors. They quickly helped her to see the servant of God. He said, please, he must pray for me. Oh. Look at what I did. So, 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 yeah. so they quickly arranged her. 
So when Papa got there, Papa started laughing. He said, I was not aware when you did it. But the one that was watching you gave you what you are looking for. <laughs> I was not aware when you were doing it. But the one that saw you gave you what you are looking for. But I operate a law of advanced forgiveness. Go, thy sins are forgiven. Tell your neighbor, check your heart. People are not blessed, not because they are not committed, but because their heart is wrong. Check your heart. Every day, not, not once in a week. Every day. Every day. Every day. Check your heart. If you don't put your heart to check, you may think you are serving God, but you are under punishment. That is what we call serving with frustration. Many are serving God with frustration. But they contributed to their frustration. That's a and Abiram. They woke up one morning. Moses, you are taking too much. Oh. Watch, watch, watch yourself. Oh. We saw you when you started growing up. You don't know your mate again, Abby? We saw you when you were growing up. Are you the only one permitted to prophesy? Are you the only one God is speaking to? Don't we know that before you grew up to become a prophet, we too we have been hearing God. God was the one that replied them. Are you not afraid to talk about my servant Moses? He said to other prophets, I speak to them with dreams and vision. But to Moses, I speak to him one on one as a friend. Talk to his friend. He said, you will not die on ordinary death. The earth will open up their casket and you will just die. What was their problem? It's not their utterance, their heart. Scripture say, out of the abundance of their heart. Check your heart. Beyond that, there are some people that are angry with God. They don't like the way. Lord, are you sure you are okay? Are you sure you are okay? Are you sure you are seeing where? We started this church. Lafia Church. Down, down, down side. Small, small boys and small, small girls will just be coming and you will be giving them testimony. Make sure you are looking well. Oh. They are now canceling God. Look well. Check your heart. Tell your neighbor, check your heart. God told Papa, don't claim to be looking at me when you are looking at other things. He said, make your eye one to look up and the other one to look down. He said, it's not possible. He said, that's how it is. Anytime you are pretending as if you are looking at me, looking up to me, I know that you are not looking up to me, you are looking at me. Hear this. Alternatives. They don't register it in the face. It is in the heart. God sees your heart. So you can be dedicated to God without consecrating your heart. And lastly, 
dedication produces anointing. The more committed you are, the more anointed you become. The more dedicated you are, the more grace, the more the anointing is being multiplied in your life. Why? You are available. <laughs> God releases grace to the available. This person is dedicated to this. So let me give him the necessary backup to get it done. The necessary backup. You get the backup because you are dedicated to the cause. Power is a backup. The anointing is a backup. Why? You are dedicated. God can be releasing his power, his anointing, to someone that is not dedicated to what he wants done. So it is always to the one that wants something to be accomplished as the one that gets the backup. In summary, I want to put it this way. Ordinary people do things that are convenient, but dedicated people, they are addicted to a cost. They are willing to pay the price. They sacrifice their time, their money, their energy, their skill to make sure that things are working. And hear this, you cannot be dedicated and not be elevated. You cannot be dedicated and not be elevated. See thou a man diligent in his business. He says, he shall not stand before mean men, but before prince and kings. In this covenant day of new beginning. <laughs> he said, Behold, think not of the former. I will do a new thing. God is about starting new, new things in your life. Amen. If you like, say amen. amen. New things brings about new open doors. New blessings, new success, new opportunities, new levels of destiny help us. I will do a new thing. But look at it. He said, Shall you not know it? Pause. Don't remove that scripture. Shall you not know it? Meaning, there is a knowing required. Every new thing that God will do in your life, you must increase in knowing. <laughs> it places a demand on you to search for knowledge. New things. Shall you not know it? If you don't know it, how will you know when it has come? God is saying, I will do a new thing. He places a demand on you to search. What are the things required of me? That brings us to what we call spiritual preparation. Spiritual preparation precedes divine manifestation because everything God says, He places a demand on you to begin to prepare. I will do a new thing, meaning start preparing. Only the prepared are qualified for the blessing. It's not enough to hear God is about to start something new in my life, you start preparing. Let me take example now. 
the moment a woman gets pregnant, new things have started. Meaning, husband, radio, in nine months' time, we are no longer two, we are three, oh, feeding bottle, oh, siri lako. Eh? Ah, pampas. In fact, pampas can be five per day or eight per day. <laughs> Meaning, prepare. T say to your neighbor, prepare. <laughs> if you don't prepare, you'll be cutting your rapper. Am I saying the truth? You'll be cutting your rapper. If you don't prepare, you will become a welfare mother and a welfare father. Uh, our house just finished um, and baby just arrived. It's a lie. God has given you signal. He has given you nine moon signal. Am I saying something? Nine moon signal means increase your preparation. There is a new arrival that is about to take place. If you don't prepare, you will mess yourself up. Am I saying something to somebody? Now God is telling you a new thing is about to start in your life. He wants you to start preparing. Let me say this again. Life is in chapters. Some people have 15 chapters. Some people have 30 chapters. Some have 100 chapters. Life is in chapters. There is a chapter of favor that is about to open for your life. There is a chapter of breakthrough that is about to open for your life. There is a chapter of progress that is about to open for your life. But if you don't prepare for them now, you make a mockery to what God has said. Everything God says, God brings them to pass. But it answers first to the prepared. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, I was reasoning yesterday that the levels of favor I'm seeing now, I didn't see them five years ago. Five years ago, I didn't see them. That goes to let you know that I'm entering new chapters in my life. I'm entering new chapters of favor. New chapters of grace. New chapters of wisdom. New chapters of opportunities. But you must prepare for them. In prayer. In fasting. If something big is coming, you must prepare big. You can't prepare small. God has declared it new things. You are about to see new things. You are about to experience new breakthroughs. You are about to experience new open doors. But you need to start preparing. Preparing. Job said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. Why? You don't wait for what you are not sure. You wait for what is sure. You start preparing. Behold, I will do a new thing. By myself have I sworn. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. God is not a liar. He's a covenant keeper. Anything he says is already done. You now begin to prepare yourself to assess what has been prepared. And I want you to hear this. You can never be over prepared for what God has prepared for you. You can never. You can never be over prepared. As you are preparing, doors are opening. As you are preparing, chapters are opening. As you are preparing, God is connecting you to your dream makers. He's connecting you to your destiny helpers. Your preparation now is crucial to the next helper you will meet. Yes, he has declared. I will do a new thing. Watch out. May you not be among those that will miss it. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I will do a new thing. I 
And lastly, God has said he will do a new thing. New things require new levels of sacrifice. New levels of sacrifice. If you want to see what you have never seen before, get ready to do what you have never done before. The old must give way for the new. The old must give way for the new. So new things are about to take place in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That problem that has kept you on the same spot, it has expired. Amen. Why? New things are taking place in your life. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I will do a new thing steers up new levels of expectation. And new levels of expectation, they are products of new dreams. Now God has said, I will do a new thing. What are the new things you want to see take place in your life? Scripture says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So, your new things, they are the mercy of your vision. But very shortly, we are going to rise up to pray. Isaiah 14 and verse 24 and verse 27. The Lord of hosts has proposed. And who shall this annul? His hand. <laughs> and his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? God has proposed it. That beginning from today, new beginning. <laughs> Your frustration have come to an end. That embargo of delay over your life has come to an end. The Lord of us has proposed and who shall disannul? No matter who is angry with you, they cannot stop what God is about to do. Rise up to your feet. New beginning will require new dedication. <laughs> new beginning will require what? New dedication. You can't see something new without being dedicated. You are going to pray. Lord, I rededicate my life to you. I reconsecrate my heart to you. I rededicate myself. Church is not a passageway to hell. Church is a passageway to the glorious life. David missed it and he cried out, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He said, Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Re restore to me the joy of of my salvation. Anytime you come to church and you are always feeling bad, I want to let you know the spirit of God has left you. Write it down, I said so. Some people, they will be in church and they are feeling bad, feeling bad, feeling bad. Scripture says in his presence, there is fullness of joy, not fullness of sadness, not fullness of bitterness. No! It is witchcraft. You have been bewitched somewhere. You were bewitched before you came. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Your heart, in fact, God has left your heart. There is need for rededication of your heart to God. No wonder Paul told the Galatian church, oh Galatians, who has bewitched you? He said, did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? Please, I beg you, your heart needs to be rededicated back to God. Because your blessings for life, they are tied to your dedications. I'd like you to lift up your voice wherever you are. Lord, I rededicate my heart to you. Whatever is making me lukewarm, 
whatever is making me passive, whatever is making me complacent, heal my heart. Heal my heart. Spirit of God, heal my heart. In the name of Jesus, purge my heart. In the name of Jesus, I reconsecrate my heart to you. Every filthy thought, every filthy thought that is not glorifying you, lift up your voice and pray. You don't know what to pray, just follow what I'm saying. F purge my heart from every filthiness of the flesh, every filthy thought in the name of Jesus. Whatever is making me lukewarm, whatever is making me passive, whatever is making me complacent, whatever is quenching my spiritual life, my prayer life, Lord, heal my heart. Heal my heart afresh. Heal my heart afresh. Oh, I consecrate my heart afresh unto you. I rededicate my heart afresh unto you. In the name of Jesus, I rededicate my heart afresh unto you. I rededicate my heart afresh unto you. Let my heart be purged of every filthiness of the flesh, every form of pride, every form of lukewarmness, every form of self. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, I rededicate my heart unto you to serve you better than I've been doing before. Lay on the Catalia. Holy Ghost, let your fire purge my heart. Purge my heart, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You are here, you are not born again, inside and outside. This is your best chance of surrendering your life unto Jesus. You can't be dedicated to Jesus without first giving your life to Jesus. But you want to make it right with God wherever you are right now, inside and outside, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray this prayer with me wherever you are, 